Way back in January, I, I made a short video about a 5532. Yes, I know, one of those preamp. And this one was unusual for me anyway, insofar as it had tone controls. And I built it and had a listen to it and a measure. And the conclusion I came to was it was very non-hi-fi for want of a better description. The main reasons were that it had ridiculous amounts of lift and cut on the controls, making it far from what I would term hi-fi. Because if you think what hi-fi is, it's basically trying to reproduce what was on the source to start with. And if you end up having to put 15 to 20 dB of bass lift on or something like that, then there's something very wrong with your system. Other than the fact you may just like ridiculous amounts of bass. But, I mean, that's a personal choice and I wouldn't say you're right or wrong, but it isn't hi-fi in the real sense of the word because, as I said previously, hi-fi is to try and reproduce what was originally recorded and if you have to put so much lift or cut or something like that there's something either wrong with your speakers um, or you have a non-hi-fi view of sound which is fine i'm not knocking it but for that reason i found it was not very hi-fi and because it had such high levels of lift. It also gave quite a bit of phase shift which again destroys the image of the sound and just basically muddles it up. The answer is of course you've just put all the controls flat and in an ideal world that would be that would be the answer. So you, you do have the option of giving whatever cut or lift you, you think is necessary. But at least if you want to go in the, in the real sense of the word hi-fi with i.e. a flat response, then you can do it. But because this has got so much lift, putting the control in the center is not very accurate. And you think you've got the knobs all lined up equally, but the response is far from flat simply because you've you've only got to move it a couple of degrees and that's about three or four db so that's why i gave it generally a negative um, conclusion but if you're the kind of person that likes all that lift and and you like to mess with the tone controls and have a very high degree of variation then this preamp as it is was for you and I'm not judging one way or another other than to say as it is it suits a certain person and doesn't suit another person. I'm not making any judgments because when I was young I was the bass boy you could never have too much bass um, but as you mature <laughs> and I've certainly done that some would say not but still you tend to look for more like the original recording. Anyway, the point of this video is not to go over old stuff that I've already done, but to tell you that I've made a very simple modification to it that will cost you a dollar or less than a, well, less than a pound depending on, on your currencies to do. What I've done, I've drawn, I've drawn some graphs out rather than try and explain what I've done. And I'm going to show you how to modify the board, assuming, of course, that you've already got one and built one. Mind you, saying that, even if you decide to buy one now, it's very easy to modify the board to give what I would call the board tone controls for the hi-fi enthusiast, i.e. instead of having plus and minus 15 to 18 or more dB going out 
either end to, to ridiculous levels. This on average gives you plus and minus 6 dB on the various bands. And you can fix it very easily with the aid of six resistors. Simple as that. No other modifications. You haven't got to hack the board. I'll show you presently and I'll show you the results of it. Now, the original one, if you've not seen the video, I should put a link underneath. So before you know how much better this is, you really need to know how bad the other one was. Doing these modifications does actually reduce, well, it, I was going to say it reduces the overall gain of the preamp, but that's not strictly true. When in the flat response, i.e. with all the pots centrally, it gives about 3 dB less gain than it did, so not so much. But it no longer gives you 15 to 20 dB of lift on the various bands. It's limited now to about 6 dB. Now, don't think that that's not very much, because overall it's a 12 dB variation between the, the, the maximum boost and the maximum cut. So it's still quite considerable, unlike the um, original one that, that had a response that was just like this. It just gave a huge gain bubble at the base end and the mid range and the treble. This starts off, all the, re all the references, by the way, are reference to one kilohertz. So we're using that as, if you like, 0 dB. Um, so that will show you the, the, the gain or the cut. Now, the characteristic of, of, of this modification is slightly different to what it was. It used to have an enormous peak like that, and then it stayed flat right down to subsonic levels. It now comes out and rises and that tends to hold at that level. So once you, you've come off the 0 dB, it starts to rise up to a maximum of 6 dB right the way through to a few hertz, basically. And this gives a much more pleasing sound to the lift and cut. For example, the treble instead of boosting like mad at about 3 or 4k, which really hurts your ears. It's shrill and hard and horrible. But this just gives a rise and basically almost flat at up to 6 dB, right the way up to 20 kilohertz. And the effect of this is it just brightens the overall sound rather than giving you that peak that really hurts your ears or on the opposite end of the scale it changes the bass to just really the low end it doesn't boost the bass way they normally do and you you end up with a huge peak at about 100 to 150 hertz which gives that so-called one note bass because the response is like that this comes up and and stays more or less flat. I'm going to show you. I am. I know I'm waffling, but I want to tell you about it because it's turned that board into a very usable board. Just by changing this one resistor, if you, if you think there's not enough lift on there for your taste, but you just want to go up a little bit, you can alter the value and it works rather well. Uh, two of the pots use the same resistor and the other one, I can't remember which one at the moment, has a different value resistor to give the best results. But resistors cost pennies, so you can always tack these on without shortening them or putting them in circuit perfectly. And you can either look at, if you've got test gear of your own, you can either look at it and see what it does um, or you can use these things and you can alter it until it um, suits your requirements. Now a few people have said that they like the idea to see a graph rather than me running the scope backwards and forwards and uh, trying to show you what's going on. Now the plus side of that is you can see pretty well 
what the response is like. But the bad news is my graph skills are leave a lot to be desired. Here we go. Now you can see that is the 0 dB line and the upper line is the boost and the lower line is the control on cut. The scale is a little cramped um, insofar as the first part you see is 10 dB but it does show you the maximum boost is about 6 dB and it's fairly flat all the way up to 100 Hz rather than giving you that huge peak like that which sounds awful and the same with the cut now I haven't showed the mid-range on this because it's a bit confusing if you try and put all these things on the graph I'll show you the mid-range separately and the same with the HF you get quite a flat response and it goes up to a maximum of about 5 dB and a slightly more cut with everything central and flat the response is half a dB down at 25 kilohertz. So a very respectable frequency response. I haven't put the low end because it's basically flat down to a couple of hertz. Because the graph goes down to 10 and you can see it's still traveling along. Now this graph shows you the effect of the mid-range control. Now this is, I haven't gone any further this way because it's basically flat and with all the tone controls flat except for the mid-range control you can see it does intrude quite a bit into the low frequencies at 100 Hz but it's only a dB or so up or down there and the same with the HF. It does continue to work up to 10 kHz which is arguably treble but it is rolling off there and the maximum effect is round about 5k. Now I have to say that I haven't interfered with the um, turnover frequencies but I could have altered the capacitors to make that just a peak in the mid-range but I found the sound or the effect of this to be much nicer because mid-range is one of those sort of frequency bands that's really just speech and um, it tends to be an, an unpleasing band if you, if you know what I mean. Cheap and nasty transistor radios in the past used to have a response from about 200, well it was never flat anywhere, up to about 2k and that's basically to the effect of putting the mid-range control on maximum boost. This is the board and from the top of it you can't see what the modifications are but I, I've put the um, a letter on here so you can see which each pot does. Treble, mid, bass and volume. Now it may or may not be obvious but to get a flat response the, the potentiometer, which are basically 50 kilohertz, a fifth, no, they're not 50 kilohertz, they're 50 k ohm linear pots. So, in other words, when that control is in the center, the center pin should read 25k that way and 25k that way. So, it is important that you put the knob on the potentiometer in the right place because if you don't and you just carelessly put the knob on the pot you may think you're getting say a flat response here but it could be three or so db down simply because you've not taken the time to put it in the center but these little pots that come with it whilst they're quite low low cost they are remarkably good pots in terms of accuracy. The only mistake with this kit is they put a linear pot also for the volume and it should of course be a logarithmic pot. Um, in the real world it's, it's acceptable to be honest but it, the effect of that is that the um, lower end of the pot is a little cramped. 
So if you get these kits and you find that they haven't supplied you with a logarithmic pot, it might be worth buying another one locally and putting a log in there. Or you can modify it by putting a resistor across it. You, you'll see that's easily done. If you explore that on the internet, you'll see it. Here's what it looks like in the real world. And the potentiometer that's just off screen here, that's the volume control and you don't mess with that at all. Now, bearing in mind, I've been experimenting with this and I've had different resistors on and off here for the last couple of hours. So don't judge my neatness. This is a prototype and I hope if you're going to do this, you will do it with a little bit more neatness and skill than I have. These two and these two use a 10K resistor. And this one, which is the treble, uses a 1K resistor. Both the same, that's one channel, that's the other channel. So 1K resistors here, 10Ks here and here. And that's all there is to do. There's no risk of damaging the PCB because that is the pins of the pot. So you've got nothing to unsolder or, or to do anything. So anybody should be able to do this. The only thing you need to be careful of is this track running under here. So don't squash the resistor down onto the board. I mean, in an ideal world, you could probably heat shrink around it. But saying that, I've not had any issue just dropping these on like this. So it's up to you to make a good job or a mess like I have. But it does work. Try it. It's going to cost you the price of six resistors and preferably use one percent. But bearing in mind, this is not a laboratory piece of equipment. But saying that, the components supplied are generally pretty good for considering it costs peanuts. And of course, the 5532s are fakes. But in all honesty, because the gain demand from them is not that high, the fakes that are supplied, you can't audibly tell any difference. It's up to you if you want to change them or not. Here's a circuit diagram, by the way. Um, I think it's a circuit diagram. I haven't traced it through to the letter. So please forgive me if you detect a different value resistor or something like that. I haven't gone to that, those extremes, but it's a pretty good approximation as to what you can expect on the circuit. And as you can see, the first IC is basically a buffer. It doesn't really offer any gain at all. Let me know what you think if you've built it or changed it or you've optimised it with a different value resistor. Somewhere between 1 and 10k seems to be about the best. But you do have to put the 1k in for the HF. I haven't quite worked out why yet, but the... <laughs> Thank you for watching, I appreciate it.